Time now for some business headlines. Let's bring in Jen and the Money Men, Executive Vice President of the Commonwealth Foundation, Jennifer Stefano, Business and Markets Analyst and Newsmax contributor, Seth Denson, and America's Accountant, Accounting Professor, Dan Geltrude. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I feel like you should start out with, you know, if I could turn back time. Come on, Carl. I, I think Sing actually along. that's what Carl was playing in the studio. Sometimes he does push-ups, sometimes in the studio he listens with to Carl share. Playing that, so yeah, I, I know. <laughs> All right, let's take a quick look at business headlines. The stock market had a wild ride last week. Jennifer, what do you expect this week coming up? More of it. This is going to be a very volatile time as we go into March when feds are going to raise rates. I think investors are trying to adjust and prepare for what is going to be a very bumpy year with increased interest rates. And I think for the average investor, the headlines are stressful and they're confusing. And so I think that a lot of people are going to be swapping and trading positions and selling. And uh, it's that irrational exuberance that we know surrounds the stock market. Yeah, just a quick follow up question, Jen, how when they raise interest rates, what is the average? Is it like half a point? Is it a point? Is something significant? Well, look, they're sitting on nine trillion dollars in cash. So it all depends. It depends on what they think is going to take to get um, this inflation down. Now, mm -hmm. the Fed said they were going to raise rates at least four four times this year. I don't think they'll end yeah. up doing that. What they'll probably do is offer a bigger correction up front and then see how that goes, or excuse me, a more moderate correction up front, see how that goes and then increase it as they go on. But I, I don't think they'll end up hitting four. They often don't meet their own predictions, but <laughs> we'll see. They got a lot of money to draw down on and they said they're going to do that. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's talk about Florida. We just heard Mike uh, talk about there's this freeze in Florida that can affect the crop, but also uh, they're expected to have the smallest orange harvest in 75 years due to a plant disease. So now they've got the freeze and this plant disease. Dan, what effect do you think this will have in the industry in Florida? Uh, it won't be a good one. I mean, this is what is liquid gold to Florida, right? Their orange mm -hmm. juice crops. So with the challenges that we already see in the supply chain and inflation, and now you have crops being impacted by disease, uh, I, I think it's going to be really tough for consumers. I think we'll we'll end up seeing more shrinkflation, right, related to orange juice, mm -hmm. which means packaging will probably be reduced and prices will go up. So this is unfortunate both for the consumer and for those Florida farmers. Yeah, not not good news. Uh, Seth, a group in Ohio wants to go green, but we're not talking about energy. There has been submitted enough signatures to legislatures in Ohio to force them to decide whether or not recreational use of small amounts of marijuana should be legal for people over 21 to use. Do you think this is good or bad for the Ohio economy? Well, from an economic perspective, it, th this does tend to be a good thing. It generates taxable revenue um, versus others that are going to get it by not paying taxes because they're getting it from people they shouldn't be getting it from. Um, you know, from a societal d discussion, who knows, right? Uh, I know that for me, when I have to travel to places where this is legal, uh, I, I tend to not want to go there, uh, yeah. not because of, you know, decisions based on certain personal things, although I'm that we can have that discussion another time uh, more. I hate the smell of it and, and it drives me nuts. And when you go to a lot of these places, so I don't know, I think though, if, if it will certainly increase Ohio's tax base um, and maybe help them pay for some of the things they're wanting to do. Yeah, I hear you. When I walk the streets of New York, you can smell it. And it's just, it's gross, especially when I have my kids. Um, all right, here's an interesting story. Tesla has a new feature. It's a, called a car karaoke. They sell a microphone for the new software that they are releasing. Um, all right, well, sorry, I want to get quick reaction from all of you. Uh, Jen, do you think, um, what do you think about this? Do you think Elon Musk should bring it to the USA? Would, would you use a, a karaoke in your car? I will mortgage the house for that. Are you kidding? <laughs> Do you know how good of a singer I am in the shower? I'm an amazing, I'm Broadway level. Yes, bring it, please. Mortgaging the house, uh, whatever it takes. Mm -hmm. Dan, would you... I love it. Dan, would you drive to New Jersey with a karaoke in your car? <laughs> yeah, well, not so much for me. However, let me just comment. We heard Seth belting out a few notes. I was at a conference in Las Vegas with Seth. He was doing uh, show tunes. Uh, fantastic. <laughs> so not for me. Clearly for him, though. Yeah. Hey, Seth, I've seen some videos of you guys in the car, you and the kids. You do your Friday jams. This seems like oh, something absolutely. you'd be interested yeah, in. Yeah, music is the spice of life, right? Uh, listen, even if it was just share on repeat all day long, that was the only <laughs> karaoke track. Absolutely, I am buying it. I'm all right, well, I think Carl, Carl will join you. All right, Seth, Dan, and Jen, thank you so much. We'll see you in the next hour.